Hi, everybody. <laughs> so John told me he didn't have to introduce me because everybody already knows me. So that makes you my fan club. I just want you to know. Oh, yay. Thank you. I have to change my glasses really fast so I can see what we have here. Okay, so um, I am excited to be here this morning. Uh, the talk for this morning is called Free to Be. Reverend Patty had chosen that talk title, and I just decided to keep it. I'm sure that I have no idea what she had in mind for it, and possibly she doesn't either, because that's how it is with talk titles. So if you were here two weeks ago, you heard Dr. Sharon uh, talk to us about manifesting her perfect life partner and that they've been married for 31 years. And then last week, Reverend Jean talked about manifesting her perfect life partner and that they've been together for 20 years. So since I've never been married, we're through with that book. <laughs> was funny, wasn't it? <laughs> I, would, I will tell you that once in a while when you run into somebody that uh, you haven't seen for a long time, they always ask you, oh, and you're married and so on, and you say, no, I've never been married, and they go, oh, you're smart, which makes it sound like marriage isn't such a great idea. And, but what I really think is that they envy my freedom or what they see as my freedom. And... To some folks, it looks like freedom. It doesn't mean that I don't have any responsibilities. It means that all the responsibilities are mine. That sounds familiar, right? I have learned that when you envy something about somebody's life, they're probably envying something about your life. So what looks like freedom to them, uh, they're you're looking at their um, companionship or their life partnering. Or there's always something. Um, I also think that each one of us, however many people are here in this room, we have that many different ideas or pictures of what freedom looks like. Some people, it's a lifestyle. Some people, it's a feeling. Like last week, Reverend Jean said that freedom is a feeling. Um, some, some of us might think that it's an abundance of money so that you don't have those financial worries that are on your mind. For one person, it might look like a regular paycheck. To an, another person, it might be that keeping a structured schedule inside a cubicle would be the last thing that would be freedom. It could feel like uh, staying in your pajamas all day. Or somebody else might think, that was you, right? <laughs> somebody else might think it's getting up early and going fishing or going shopping or going picnicking. It could feel like traveling or staying home. The varieties of the look of freedom, they could be endless. To one person, it might be having less obligations and to another, it might be having more time with family and friends. On the very first page of the Science of Mind textbook, Dr. Holmes writes, the divine plan is one of freedom. Bondage is not God-ordained. Freedom is the birthright of every living soul. All instinctively feel this. The inherent nature of man is forever seeking to express itself in terms of freedom. So there are times in our lives when it feels like anything but freedom. We have deadlines and commitments, what to leave in, what to leave out. Ha, ah, that comes from a song. <laughs> if you know what song it came from, John will give you a prize later. <laughs> we have to go to work. We have to take care of a family member. Or we have obligations that we have to attend to. We're constantly making trades. We trade our time for our job. We trade time with friends for time with TV. 
We trade money for things. We trade security for spontaneity, companionship, or being alone. We do it automatically without thought. It's called choice. But we do have freedom. We could say, no, I'm not going to work. Or we could say, no, I'm not going to take care of that loved one. Or whatever that thing is that feels so heavy. But we also, and this is more important, we also have choice about the thoughts we have about that situation. We could recognize or view our life from the viewpoint how someone else looks at your life. We could see what someone else sees or, and always, of course, be grateful. We could say, I'm grateful that I have a job because there are many who do not. I'm grateful that I get to spend this extra quality time with this loved one. I'm grateful for this situation to practice trusting the universe and seeing freedom in every moment. So I have a favorite Dr. Holmes book. It's called This Thing Called You. And in this book, Dr. Holmes likens our connection to spirit as like electricity, explaining that electricity is always present whether or not we use it. And it doesn't care if it's connected to a toaster or to the dryer. It's going to be used the same way. You just have to flip the switch and turn it on. It's the same way for us. Spirit is universal. It doesn't care if we know it's, that we're connected to it or not. It's still working. It's working all the time. It doesn't care if we're man or woman, both, neither, any style or color, whatever the year, make, or model. It's always available. We're connected because we're alive. So you just turn on your switch, which is your awareness, and then be very vigilant about what you think and say. In this book, it says, you need not go through any practices to unify with this power, for you are already one with it. You need not go in search of it because it is already where you are. Because you are always in contact with it, you can bring into your life the good you so greatly desire, for it will honor your desires. If you're feeling stuck, trapped, less than prosperous, or lonely, turn your awareness to your desire, the opposite of what you're feeling, in the present, and activate your on switch, and remember that you always have what you need. In practical terms, this is how you would start. If you're feeling lonely, Think of the friends you have and how much they mean to you. Look in your phone book, or if you don't have that anymore, you look in your phone, and you see all the names of the people that you could probably call at any time. And those people love you, and then you feel gratitude for them. If you, if you feel like you're struggling with prosperity, say out loud, in this moment... I have everything I need. And think about what you have. You have a place to live. You have water. You have clothes to wear. I have everything I need in this moment. Then go clean something out. Go clean out the drawer. Go clean out a closet. Go clean out the bookshelf, that storage you're paying for every month. Get what? I'm not the only one. Get rid of things that are redundant or no longer serve you and be grateful for the use that you had of them. Because this is stuck energy. And when you feel stuck, you need to start a flow and make room for what's new. And that's a good place to do it. Back when I was a wee small lass this big, I went to a Christian Science Sunday school and when right inside the door, right on the wall, it said, Divine love always has met and always will meet every human need. And that's a good thing to remember. 
when you feel stuck, you need to start that flow and make room for what's new. And also, gratitude always fixes everything. And also in this thing called you, Dr. Holmes says, stop arguing. Learn to believe. Stop debating. Learn to accept. Stop looking for an authority outside of yourself and outside of your own conviction. This calls for complete confidence in the law and an equal confidence in yourself. If you wish to be healed, you must expect to be made whole. If you wish freedom, you must no longer think bondage. Bondage and freedom are two ways of using the same law. If you spend all your time saying, I am poor, weak, sick, miserable, unhappy, ugh, you will attract poverty, weakness, sickness, and unhappiness. Use your intellect, imagination, and feeling for the purpose of seeing and sensing freedom instead of bondage, joy instead of unhappiness, plenty instead of want, and health in place of disease. See, you have to be vigilant about your thinking. When Dr. Holmes uses these affirmations, they're always in the present. It's important because the universe is acting directly on the words that you say. If you say, I will be rich or healthy or employed or whatever that thing is, the feeling is in the future, I will be. And the universe will always... Hold that request in the future. You'll feel like your prayer was not answered, but in fact, it was answered exactly as you requested it. On page 68 of this little book, my advertisement, there's a, um, there's a, a prayer affirmation. It's one of my favorites because it sounds just like me. Today and every day, I expect good. I anticipate meeting new friends. I joyously anticipate contacting new situations which will increase my livingness. My life is an adventure. I know that wonderful things are going to happen to me. I know that everything I do shall turn into good for myself and others. That's so fun. That's so fun. Now, just on a side note, it has been said that if two people were thrown off the top of the Empire State Building and one of them was me, the other one would always get to the ground first because I have to stop and talk to everyone on my way down. <laughs> Which brings me to my next point. Know who you are. Know who you are because in knowing that, there is freedom. Don't try to make everybody else happy. God is expressing as you for a reason. As you. It doesn't need copies of somebody else. It needs only originals. If you're a person who requires time out to refuel or regenerate, do that with no apologies. If you need to dance or sing or create or just be messy, then just do that. If you're spontaneous and in a relationship with Mr. or Mrs. Schedule Everything, then you need to honor each person's expression. You could schedule a block of time, just schedule the time, and don't schedule what's in it until the time, and then you... That way you've scheduled and you can be spontaneous at the same time. Some folks find freedom in structure, meaning they want the framework or the outline. They want the parameters. And then from there, they're free to create inside that. Some folks want no structure. That looks like freedom to them. I like variety, which is why right now I have three different jobs that are very different. I'm kind of a tie-dye person in a pinstripe world. <laughs> I don't always do things in the most conventional or traditional way. But you are free to express the way God made you. And 
you will be happier for doing that. And as a result, the folks around you will be happier as well. And by doing that, by expressing in your way, authentically, you'll be giving them permission to express in their fullness and authenticity. So for me, the title free to be means free to be authentic. A couple of weeks ago, I was invited on a trip to Oshkosh, Wisconsin to a giant air show. It's the biggest air show outside of Paris. And originally I said no, because it's too soon, there's not enough time to plan it right, and a whole bunch of other stuff, including, and what will people think? That one's very popular, you know? <laughs> and later I realized that that was 20-year-old Diane thinking about wondering what other people will think, and that now I'm not that 20-year-old anymore. <laughs> And so I changed my mind. I almost missed out on a fabulous adventure. And then I said yes. And so now, in a week, I'm going on this great trip. But thank you. See, you are my fan club. My, my point in telling you this is that how many decisions are you making, you, any of you, based on 20-year-old self or parents' thoughts or somebody else's thinking rather than being your own authentic self. Because being your free, authentic self is far more important. Yay. <laughs> so several years ago, I read an article in Oprah Magazine, and it said this. She said, today, a lot of people assume they're fearful because of terrorism or the shaky economy. But I've grown certain that the root of all fear is that we've been forced to deny who we are. Because when you get right down to it, even the fear of death is nothing compared to the fear of not having lived authentically and fully. That's brilliant, isn't it? So I wish you a very authentic life filled with joy filled with love, and filled with whatever it is that makes your heart sing. And then I'm just going to close with this verse that one of our beautiful and dear friends, TK, wrote. He gave me permission. It says, I have seen the universe in a mirror, confused by the reflection, overwhelmed by the truth. I have seen the universe in a mirror, it is me. Thank you. Aww. Thank you. Oh 
admit that you're infinite. You can't get it done. This life's but a moment. You will go on and on. Those things that you're reaching for, they need your belief. Stir up your faith just a bit. The waiting to be. What you believe that colors the day you're bringing. It's there in your hand, it's at your command. Why wouldn't you wake up singing? Nobody gets to dance for you, nobody makes your dreams come true, but you get to, yes, you get to. And nobody's gonna light the way, nobody brings a brighter day. again. <laughs> so now it's time for our conscious giving. Oh look, there's the singers. <laughs> so right now just take your gift in your hand, hold it wherever. What's that? Oh, okay. Uh, okay, if we have um, automatic tithing or whatnot, you can get one of these lovely cards. And then we'll do a prayer. Those cards are affirmations and blessings that you can top, drop in the basket. That looks jolly, okay. Okay, sorry. <laughs> All right, so just know with me right now that there is one and only one. It is the source of all good, and it is the source of our good now. I know that there is generosity of spirit in each one of us. It is absolutely, exactly like the generosity of spirit that is God. And so in this moment, we are grateful for all the gifts we have, and we generously give from that. Each one of us is a blessing to vision, and each one of our contributions is also a blessing to vision. So right now, I just let these words go, knowing that those big open hearts are giving fully and freely and so it is. So it is. <laughs>